Hello everyone, welcome back to Prince and Nikki's channel. Thank you for joining us today. We just want to bring you an update on the last video that we did, which was the first floor block work and the columns. So today's video is going to show you the feature column and the lintels for the first floor of our building project. For those of you who have not recently watched the video, this is a four bedroom house in Accra. Just want to give a big thank you to all of you that have continued watching the videos throughout and have been enjoying the journey that we've been on so far. I do find that um, also as a viewer and creating these videos, it's really helpful for anyone that's on a building project to be able to interact and understand what other people are finding useful on their own building projects. So let's get into the video. So as you can see on the video now, the um, guys are just setting up for the first floor feature columns at the front of the house. Yeah, these columns are 18 inches by 18 inches of 450 by 450. These are quite uh, uh, very big, large columns and, and consume a lot of cement. <laughs> <laughs> For anyone who's been watching our journey, everyone who has been watching will know Prince and his 10 bag columns. He doesn't like it, do you? No, no, but we, we, we made some changes here. <laughs> so I think it's when we come to do the talk about the lintels, we make some changes so we spend less uh, cement when we, we, we're at this level. But they are, they are quite a big column, 18 inches by 18 inches as a column. It's, it's quite a huge column, uh, nearly half a meter, a meter, a meter by half a meter, isn't it? So yeah, it's but they're nice, they're features. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so you have to put your hand in your pocket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So here you can see the guys, they're um, just preparing and doing their wood. Um, we did have some issues at this stage, didn't we, with the wood? Yes, uh, we don't know. Someone uh, stole all our wood. So we have a place where we keep all our materials and wood, uh, a friend, uh, not, not far away from where our uh, building is. Um, what happened is when we finished casting the, the floor, uh, the first floor, the guys who we rented the metal place from, they came to remove the woods and the boards. And mysteriously, we don't know what happened to the wood until it's this time when the guys, the carpenter called and said, we don't have enough boards uh, for the lintel. I mean, what do you mean? We bought um, a, a, a lot of woods, even two by four. We bought 110 two by four brand new. What were uh, boards two by four? Um, then there was over 140 boards that uh, our friend gave us. We used. So what happened to all those those wood? No one could say what happened to them. So <laughs> they said. Oh, you better buy additional 20 boards or we have to cut this two or three times. I said, no, for the boards, I'm not going to buy additional boards because if we buy boards, what guarantee do we have that it's, it's going to be there when we need it again? So I said, yeah, we are happy for you to cast it uh, two times, uh, but let's go and remove all the boards that we have still not removed uh, from where we did the casting for the beams and see how far we can go. And they came in with, uh, we still show, so they have to cast it twice, which means instead of casting this one one time, you got to pay it labor for two, two, two days. The carpenter have to come back uh, with his uh, uh, guys, also additional cost. But to me, when I did analysis, it was so far cheaper uh, to have them do it twice and to go and buy additional boards, we, we just uh, get lost. Um, Especially at this stage, isn't it? Because now where we get into the roofing stage, we're going to have all the wood for the roofing. So we're not buying any to, more. <laughs> to me, it's, it's the two by fours, which we wanted to use for scaffolding and, and stuff, which they all just get, get lost. Um, we went back, find out from the guys who did the metal place. But I think where, where we went wrong was, there should have been somebody there eh, uh, to make sure when they are loading their stuff, yeah, they haven't taken our, our, our account for them. But what I think happened is the guys who uh, we had rented a, a place from, when they were packing their stuff, they, they took some of the boards and the, and the wood with them. But they said it happened. Uh, and this is the first time that we, we, we have lost uh, uh, something that we bought because 
they just moved from here to a house down the road so it, it's, it's quite a strange uh, situation but yeah and there was like, um yeah there, there was on the site at one point wasn't it because there was scenes of, yeah yeah they, they, it's they just were, one of those things were, you just uh, you just have to learn yeah isn't it? yeah so i think it's to me my advice is someone is if you you're renting a, a meta plate and you bought some woods when the guys um uh, come to remove their balls for what it's worth Pay somebody to go be there for two days for them to remove all their stuff and make sure your boards are there and, and they are safe. Yeah, it's, it's a challenge, but I think that's one of the things that we've always said moving throughout the project is there's always going to be speed bumps and you just got to be really careful on, on monitoring all your materials. And I think that's why we, we, I think we have been lucky in the sense that we've had, this is the first time we've had some challenges with materials and stuff, but... Um, lesson learned, we will make sure that we plan for that in the future. As you can see here, these are the feature columns. They're now um, casting them. We have um, just the two here on the first floor um, that they're casting. And as you can see, this is the master bedroom. So this is just all their kind of preparation, isn't it, for the kind of Yeah, the, the link to the, the cabinet yeah. is here uh, today. And... Uh, removing the boards from the columns and it will become uh, forming the the formwork to cast a linter. It's nice that you can see the shape of of the first floor. I think that you saw it on a lot of it on the walkthrough when we did the windows, but just to talk you through it, because we was talking about the windows, here you can see this is the master ensuite. Um, yeah, it's a nice size. I'm going to be quite pleased with it, with the closet and the layout of the I, design. I actually it? be thinking, do we actually need a bath and a shower in the same room? <laughs> so how, I, I was thinking yeah. about it. Uh, but, well, we got the provisions there uh, if we need it. Uh, we'll review that one next time with, with the in Ghana. So. Yeah, so here's this is the master bedroom. I really do like the floor to ceiling window. Um, I just find that the floor to ceiling just nice light and airy and yeah it's a nice design so i'm really happy with that yeah except that your window costs it's fifteen thousand dollars <laughs> <laughs> listen you have to have compromises prince yeah let us know what your thoughts are on the window prices yeah. guys there's obviously there's lots of different options i know a lot of people like the sliding as well because of the costing but yeah we just want something that's been going to be really secure for the building because we've got sliding in the other house and we've had two attempts of burglary as well haven't we in the house yeah and if it's not for the security bars i must say a, a very good engagement on that uh window i think one of the things i've never talked about uh, considered was that i always assume all oh, double glazing in ghana are gas filled the the, the, the paints are uh, gas filled uh, but actually someone asked the question that are these windows double glazed? Are they gas filled or are they just two glass stick together? Cause yeah. Cause the other day we were watching the video. You just assume that the double glazing yeah. comes as standard, isn't uh, yeah, it? But it can, it's actually, standard. come to think about it, gla double glazing is not. There's no point because they're not sealed windows. Double glazed. Well, we just got to find out. It, it should yeah. be somebody who there who will do windows to to international standards, isn't it? It's not just cutting two glass and trying to put them together. That is not how double glazing is, is done. Because the, the purpose of double glazing is to have some acoustic barrier. Mm. So that's why it, there's a gap between the panes of glass. Do you mean you don't like the songs on the Sunday? The noise? <laughs> you don't like the noise I'll be, I'll be going, I'll be going to church every <laughs> Sunday, so I don't, I don't mind the noise. But <laughs> the advantage of having a, a double glazed window is that there's some acoustic separation between the uh, the, the, the outside and, and the house. But I don't think it, it will work if you just stick two glass together. Uh, without any gas fill in or any, uh, it's, you need a bit more gap between them. But yeah, because the ones here they normally have like a rubber in between, isn't it? So yeah, yeah, there, there, there's a a, a a minimal gap. I think a few mils uh, between them uh, to create that separation, uh, acoustic uh, separation. So it's something I'll, I'll tomorrow I'll check from the guy we got the quotations from to say this your double glazing uh, uh, windows. How are they made? Because effectively, you don't want to pay for uh, a window yeah. that's just got two glass uh, uh, stick together on the top of each other. Cause yeah, but there's other options. I know someone else in the comments was putting... Um, louvers. Louvers. And 
our lovely site visitor said he's going to go for wooden window, the OG, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wood, OG wooden window. So, yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah, but <laughs> I think it's coming back to this uh, window things again. Yesterday, I was speaking to one of my cousins and he originally had these sliding windows. He removed them and have louvers put by. So he put a louvers within the frame, the K50 frames, and it looks very nice. Like they sharp properly. Because he was concerned that the house was just overheating. Uh, his air conditioning bill was just too much. So yeah. I think that there is a lot of consideration to, um, uh, about this. I'm more concerned about the ventilation side of having an air conditioned house without any fresh air coming in. Uh, but we are a few, a, a few uh, months off uh, uh, that. So I think it's, I'm just speaking to some people now to say how best we can get fresh into this place mechanically. Here you can see the hallway. This is um, where we've got all our plan for our storage, which I spoke about previously. What I was saying is when you're designing the house, obviously you think about your bathrooms and your wardrobes, but I think it's really important that you, you factor in a, an area where you can have your storage for your linen and your, you know, your, your longer storage things that you need. So that's where we're going to put that. And we're also thinking about the water heater being there because we're not having water heaters at this point we don't plan to have them in each bathroom no i think we just have a central one uh just there in a cupboard uh, uh you, you will not even notice it's there and i'm even thinking having our ventilation plant also just in a cupboard there uh, they are all um acoustic uh, uh acoustically installated so you won't know that nothing is in those cupboards there because there will be floor to ceiling um uh, cupboards so you will know uh, what is in there but there'll be enough spaces like what we have here in the uk we've got airing cupboards to store uh, uh towels and all all other households to store that you, you need a place to hide them in the individual rooms yeah we will we're going to be really happy with the storage and the solutions that we've built in i think it's when you come to look at it later down the line you'll really appreciate the planning that we've put in there yeah, so here what we have decided is instead of doing our beam over this uh, feature column, also 18 inches, the same width as the, the beam, we decided just to do it for just for the load bearing uh, wall. So it's only six inches. That That is where we save a lot of uh, money in terms of no additional um, iron rods, no additional boarding, no cement, nothing really because we don't really need that beam to be the same 18 inches all the way in, uh, uh, over into the building what i want to point out is if you've been watching from the beginning there has been a slight alteration at the, the top of the house isn't there that we made a decision after looking at into the parapet and we made a decision that we wasn't going to do the parapet anymore so that's been enabled us to make some changes at the top of the house as well. Yeah, yeah, that's the the roof. Uh, yeah, we 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 don't really want the parapet uh uh fascia anymore. Uh, so we're just gonna go to traditional roof. So currently the roof is being redesigned. Um, speaking to the roof the roofing companies, they could do the design, but they want you to for you to pay make a payment before uh though so. Um, our engineer is re, re looking at the roof uh, design for us slightly. We, we, I think the issue really we were not sure of the of the safety, the longevity of these uh, uh, fascias, the way they are they are installed. Uh, I'm just worried that you'll be there five six years. Those um, movements and cracks and possibly no, not even just a, yeah. you know say the it's used, it's the, binding the binding wire, wire the binding wire that is used to secure um, my feel and you then one just concrete just follow somebody so we're we just gonna go with a traditional um, yeah way? I mean we was gonna go for that anyway wasn't it so yeah. what you see here is the water meter um, as we previously spoke about the wall for the boundary um that's not actually where it is so all this grass area before the roadside is where the where we will actually bring the wall forward because that's not where the land is um so we, we're now starting to think about the planning for the front of the house so we're looking at putting some flower bedding and stuff aren't we so yeah just i uh, just because 
when we were there, like, I didn't really pay much attention here. I was concentrating on my foundation. So, so I asked Mike to say, do we have enough land uh, where we move the wall? Because the wall needs to move about 10, 10, 10 feet uh, to, to the boundary of our land. Do we have enough to do a flower bed? And so he said, yeah, there's plenty uh, to, to the road because when we went for planning, the planners came and uh, took the, 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 all the dimension and we had to revise our drawing to show where the, the road would be yeah. <laughs> every before planning. Yeah, they, <laughs> as everybody knows, planning and those things, it takes time, isn't it? So you have to just make sure that you've got the right measurements and everything correct. So yeah, here you can see the front of the road. There is an inner road, as you know, and an outer road for this house. But this will be where we enter from the front. So, um, yeah, the gate will be here. And, yeah, that's the design. You can see the feature columns coming up. Thank you for keeping with us, everyone. It's um, great for you to stick with us. Um, as you can see on the screen here, um, throughout the video, we've had our team that we're working with on the screen. And we also want to give a shout out to Bright and Clara's channel, who we've um, developed friendship with over the time, doing some great work as well. Yeah, uh, Bright have been very helpful. Uh, we, we speak off, offline and stuff, and uh, very encouraging. Um, so, yeah, uh, thank you, Bright. Give him a hit up as well. Give him a, a watch and you'll learn lots of things from him as well. So here you can see all the formation of the lintels of um, they've done it. The and first batch has been cast. Yeah, they're now starting to take it <laughs> off and prepare for the yes, other side. The second, the second, the second um, It's a, it's a, it, a bit more messy, isn't it? But we just had to do it that way because we're not. You have to have a, no. a budget and stick to it. So, so yeah, they've done the lintel here, and we will take you on to the stage where they was doing the end part of it. So yeah, they're doing the um, casting of the porch. Um, the size of this porch is how how many is it now? Oh, it's about uh two point five by two meters. Um, I think I've I've did it based on the number of bedrooms, um, you have in the UK. There is a dimension you got to allow for a balcony, so that's what it was designed based on. Um, yeah, and this on one bedroom. is um accessible via the hallway, so everyone can use the um the balcony. We did initially think about balconies for bedrooms and stuff, but it's just excessive, isn't it, for us? Yeah, uh, here uh, you can see these are the changes we made. So we so the column still going up, but the beams is reduced in size just to six inches uh, for the, the blocks that are above. So we don't do the whole 18 inches. And also you see that in the, um, when we do the kind of ceiling works, in the, isn't it, outside? Yeah, yeah, but now the column just goes, the column is extended, so it goes into the roof, so you don't really need to do any remedial works around there as you, yeah, you could have done uh, some boarding, uh, but it's, it's not required. So here you can see this is the family living area and the staircase. Um, this is where the wall was. So if you watched a video, a few videos back, we starting off we the, started, the block work. The starting of the block work, there was a wall there, um, but then we had a redesign thought, and we took that wall. I think there was only a couple of blocks, wasn't there? A couple yeah. of blocks laid, and we decided that we wanted to keep that open. It wasn't load bearing, so we took that wall. So this stairwell and the family area is all going to be glass balustrade yeah. works, nice and open and light and airy. Yeah, just to give you some idea of the number of blocks we use uh, after the, the link to level here, just on the first floor, it's a total of 2,200 uh, blocks. We are using six inches. Um, we will do, as you know, we give a full detail. So we will do a, a full detail video on the cost of the first, first floor after link to level. Yes, we know that you guys like the costing videos. They seem to be very popular in terms of um, helping people with their ideas so we will bring you one of those um, yep here you can just see the hallway and the lintels so those videos are just giving you an understanding we will try to do the cost video and we'll overlay it as well on a walkthrough so you can have a nice look at the upstairs as well but that's about it for today just want to give you a thank you for sticking with us and for watching the video Please do like and subscribe to our channel. It's helpful to encourage us. 
If you've got any questions or queries, as you know, drop us an email or you can drop a comment below and we will always endeavour to get back to you. Yes, we also got a WhatsApp number there, so you can always drop a message through the WhatsApp. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll reply. Thank you for watching, everyone. Thank you. Thanks. See you. Bye. Bye. Bye.